Stage purple is about being a member of a tribe and a clan. In a sense, this is where mankind began. Uh, mankind has lived this way for hundreds of thousands of years in a clannish, tribal, sort of little community. It's about survival as a tribe. It's about sacrificing oneself for your own tribe, being an individual subordinated to the group. Today, because most of us, if you're listening to me, you're probably living in a relatively developed part of the world, uh, maybe a Western democracy in Europe or in America or in Canada, some, something like that. Uh, and therefore, you're probably at spiral dynamic stage blue or above, probably around orange, maybe orange slash green. And so uh, at this level of development, our culture has so indoctrinated us with this notion of individuality, individual consumerism, individual property rights, my right to have a house, my right to have you know, my wife, my right to have my children, my right to have my car. It's a very, we're living in a very materialistic, individualistic age and culture, we might say. Uh, all the culture that comes out of Hollywood and so forth that is now spread all around the world. If you're watching movies and TV shows and all of this, it's all very individualistic minded. And it can create a sort of a false notion that this is how mankind has always been. We've always just thought of ourselves as individuals surviving. This, there's this kind of this libertarian myth that I've talked about in my episode about why libertarianism is nonsense. This sort of myth of the rugged individual, the sort of John Wayne character um, who survives by himself, is self-reliant, and if anybody messes with him, you know, he's got his gun and he defends his right and his property and his family and his wife and this, this sort of mentality. But this is not how the majority of mankind lives, not even to this day, but certainly not for the majority of human history. The majority of human history was communal life. You lived as part of a tribe. When you're living as part of a tribe, there is not this sense that I have an individual right to a piece of land and to a house and to a gun and to whatever. You're part of a tribe. And in fact, your larger identity, see, this is all a function of identity. And we talk about identity a lot in my teachings uh, because identity is the crux of, of all development. And really everything that goes on with humans is all about identity. So here we're talking about a very collectivist identity. And uh, you need to start to wrap your mind around the idea that having an individual identity is something that's relatively modern. It's maybe a couple hundred years old, maybe a thousand years old, you know, depending on which parts of the world we're looking at. But even today, I would say probably half the world lives in such conditions where being an individual is simply impossible. Survival as an individual is impossible. Survival means surviving as your tribe. And your tribe is extremely valuable and important to you. It's your whole life. It's your whole identity. It trumps everything else. It trumps your own personal satisfaction of your ego needs and your, your desire to play video games or to watch a movie or to have sex. All of those are subordinate to the survival of your tribe because if your tribe di dies out, nothing else is possible in many parts of the world. See, but then in the most developed parts of the world, we've sort of outgrown the tribe. Our tribe has become so big that we forget that we're even part of a tribe and that humans are a tribal species. And this leads to all sort of absurdities, which I talk about in my Why Libertarianism is Nonsense episode. Go check that out if you want to understand at a deeper level the problems that happen there. So the essence of purple is that life, not only is it communal, but it there's, it's, it's deeply mystical in the sense that it feels like life is part of this being alive within an enchanted magical village. So there's this element of spirituality, of mysticism that, that's part of stage turquoise. Because at stage turquoise, there is not advanced rationality, there is not advanced science or advanced technology. So there's not this mechanistic, materialistic worldview that is so common today that, again, we also take for granted. We sort of take for granted this idea that, well, 
everybody since the dawn of human civilization has just assumed that there are physical objects and that the universe is just this physical, logical clockwork machine. It's like a computer. It's like a computer simulation or something like that. And uh, this is just not the case. At stage purple, life is magical. Life is mystical. Stage purple seeks harmony with nature's power. There's a sort of reverence of the power of nature because people who live at stage turquoise, they generally live very close to nature. They're not living in apartment complexes or high rises in giant cities. They're living in the forest, in the jungle, on the savanna, in the desert. And their survival depends upon the water, the earth, the fish, the animals, the sun, the moon, and so on. There's an animistic spirituality, shamanistic spirituality. It's mystical. We'll talk more about that as we go forward, what that really means, this notion of animism. Uh, purple obeys the desires of mystical spirit beings, which are just thought to be part of nature. Nature is seen to be mystical. There's a deep connection to nature, and there's a sort of uncivilized, and I'm putting this in quotes, uncivilized quality to stage purple. Now, in many ways, stage purple is more, has more wisdom and is more advanced in a certain sense, we could say, than stage orange, which is extremely materialistic and disconnected from nature and the wisdom of nature. Uh, uh, but in a certain sense, also, we don't want to romanticize stage purple tribes too much because there's a reason that mankind grew out of stage turquoise or stage purple tribes is because they are uncivilized. And we'll talk about those uncivilized aspects as we go forward here. So when does stage purple emerge? Really the beginning of Homo sapiens. There was never a time in the history of Homo sapiens where we lived as individuals. I remember when I was a kid, I sort of thought that that's how mankind used to live. I thought that, well, we were all just individuals living by ourselves. And then as we became more advanced, we kind of came together and we started to cooperate together and you know, build pyramids and build cities and things like that. But before that, we were just individuals. And then later when I, when I did a deeper study, I was surprised and shocked to learn that, no, there was never such a time. There was never a time when human beings were rugged individuals living in forests by themselves. We were always part of a tribe. And if you look at our nearest ancestors, the chimpanzees and the bonobos, you see that the they don't survive by themselves. You never find a, a lone chimp walking through the forest. The chimp is always part of a troop. It might be 20 members, 30 members, 50 or 100 members, depending on the, you know, the species of the, of the primate and so forth. You know, it, it tends to vary. Uh, but th there was never this time when humans even lived as an individual family. You might say, well, the smallest unit of humanity is just a family of four. No, you can't survive as a family of four in, in the harsh wilderness of the jungle or the, the savanna or in the deserts or in the mountains. It, it just, it doesn't work. It never worked. So what happened was that our nearest common ancestor with these apes and, and primates was, was something like between, you might say, like a chimpanzee and a human. And even back then, this was like maybe a million years ago or so, even back then, uh, they were already highly social, highly communal creatures, and they, they didn't survive by themselves. And uh, and also, so that's sort of collectively where stage purple emerged. It basically emerged probably a million years ago or so. Uh, even before our species existed, it basically emerged. We can see a sort of a, a crude proto-form of it in chimpanzees and in... Uh, in bonobos, they have a certain very primitive culture. They even have tool use and other things like that that they that they learn and teach each other and so on. But individually, for humans, uh, in early childhood, you know, we're we're raised a little bit isolated. If we're if we're children, you know, the first few years we spend mostly at home. But then they throw us into kindergarten, into preschool, and then quickly elementary school, and then quickly you're learned and uh, sort of socialized and taught how to be tribal how to play in a tribe with other kids, 
how to get along, how to share things, and you know all the challenges that come with that. So you remember what it was like to learn. And, and that's difficult. It can be difficult to, to learn how to integrate with other human beings and to navigate the dynamics there. There's a certain kind of game that, you know, a social game that's played. You have to be polite. You have to be able to read their signals, their emotions. You don't want to be too mean to them. You don't want to be too much of a bully. You got to make friends. There's a sort of a politics game that's going on now. You know, so all of these social dynamics, you start learning this really young as a child. You start learning what to say. You start learning that you need to do the right things to fit in so other kids don't ostracize you, so they don't ridicule you and laugh at you, they don't bully you. And so then that whole thing, and then it just, it it keeps evolving beyond that uh, through middle school, then into high school. You know, high school becomes very much social and about playing these politics games of who's the coolest kid in school and how do you be cool? How do you hang out with the cool kids? And there's different groups and all these social dynamics. So this is where stage purple starts to emerge for you as an individual. Think back into your early childhood and teenage years where you struggled with that. And I'm willing to bet that many of you struggled with that and still struggle with it today.